Okay, so we are back in LA today, right in the heart of things in Hollywood, meeting with a couple of agents that we know, and then I'll take you around, give you a little tour. It's, uh, it's a fun place, it's really awesome. My old bedroom used to be right there above that groundwork sign. I moved to LA, and for the first six months of me living in LA, I lived in a hostel. And that's the reality of it, because I had about $200 in my pocket when I moved here. But I had a ton of belief, and I knew I'd get to where I need to go, so. It was so funny, because as you can tell from the windows, they're not double glazed, it's just a single pane of glass and some wood around the rim. So I could hear the whole street. We're on Sunset Boulevard right now. It's actually one of the busiest streets in Los Angeles. And it was so fun at the time, you know, I really enjoyed it. Just the fact of being in the hustle and bustle. CNN building there, tons of things happening all the time. But the funny thing is, is I lived here for a good amount of time, right, over six months. And I think I went to this coffee shop one time because I couldn't afford a coffee. So we'll run in there right now, just grab a quick coffee. Iced mocha with oat milk. And then can I also have one of your cinnamon coffee cakes? All right, you'll know something cool is this is probably the second coffee I've ever had in this coffee shop. Right above this coffee shop was a hostel and the hostel was my first home in LA when I moved here. I moved here with absolutely no money and uh, I stayed in this hostel for just over six months. The whole time I was in that hostel, I had a very strong feeling. I knew for 100% fact that this was just a phase. And in life, it's like sometimes, you know, you've got like a winter period. Things don't go your way, but straight after winter, there's always spring. Right? So if you know there's spring coming, you can get excited for it in the winter. And that was kind of where I was at. So living in this hostel, you know, a lot of people might think, oh, not the most ideal situation going from living in England and you know, a, a nice enough area to living here. But I was just in the mix and I was closer to where my dreams were, which was you know, being in America and having the opportunity to, to build something of my own. I didn't at any point realize it was going to be mortgage at that time. So this is a really cool experience. It's really surreal. It's just nice to come back to places like this and, um, and kind of you know, reflect on things. We're in LA right now. We're filming the second episode of this vlog that I'm doing the longer form content. And <clears throat> I just impromptu called a good friend of mine, Rodney, who's also an agent. So he has an open house right now. So we're actually gonna come. I thought I'd put this on my story too. We're gonna show you a typical open house in Hollywood right now. So come check it out. Hopefully this is something interesting. After grabbing coffee, we went over to a friend of mine, Rodney's listing. He's listing a million dollar home. When you think of a million dollar home, you think of like a huge mansion. In LA or West Hollywood specifically, a million dollar home is a two bedroom condo. It's nuts, right? So it's a perfect example of how inflation works and how inflation really benefits people that buy real estate. As, uh, as everything else goes up, so is real estate usually. So real estate is something that's amazing because you can leverage on it. Effectively, this $1 million home, if you bought this, let's say five, six years ago, would probably be worth about $600,000. You could have bought that with, let's say, $30,000 cash down. So you could have turned $30,000 into, you know, over upwards of $500,000 worth of equity in the space of five or six years. It's nuts, right? <laughs> Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? I just finished meeting with a couple of agents. Oh really? How yeah. was it? It was good, it was good. We've got a couple of developments going on, they're developing as well as, you know, obviously doing the real estate side, so we'll see if there's some construction loans there. If you want to be a mortgage broker, if you want to be in real estate, it's like it sounds so cool and it looks so like awesome on TV and you see all these like people wearing all these awesome outfits and walking around and making 100K like this, because you've just sold a $3 million home, whatever it is, right? But the reality of it in the day-to-day -day is, you spend more time chained to your phone dealing with a lot of headaches than you actually do cash and checks, right? That's, that's really what it is. Okay, so talk to me, what's, what's going on with the right now? She is just reviewing her interest rate lock options, but okay. she'll be ready to move forward with a 15-day lock. Okay, nice. She wants to close as quick as she can. Okay. So we have a client that's doing a refinance. We actually started the process with them in February, but it takes a lot for a lot of people to feel trust to move forward and make such a big decision. And this is a refinance to effectively pay off a ton of debt, a ton of liens that were on the home. We coached, we sat through, we walked through so many different breakdowns and scenarios. And every time a number changed, they're like, what happened here, what happened here? I mean, this person literally like texted me, emailed me, called me at like 11.30 at night 
with like exclamation marks. I don't want to move forward. I don't want to do this. And the next day I went, I'm really sorry. I just got stressed. And this was back in like March, right? This was like a few weeks in. What's she like on the loan amount? Um, she wants to take as much out as possible. So I have her debt to income maxed out. Okay, nice. Wow, I can't believe this is actually gonna get done. I know, this has been in process for like three, three this, months this or is something. The world's longest refinance. <laughs> I know. Yeah, but thank you so much for helping us, you know, get that one to the finish line. It takes a lot of yeah. takes a lot of work behind the scenes to to make that really happen. Very true. So we've been dealing with this loan for gosh, February, March, April, May, June, now July, six months, and we are just about to close on it. So I ended up kind of having Ashley do a lot of the communication with the client after all because the client is a lady. Ashley is a very patient and. Um, capable lady to answer questions. As good as I am with answering questions, you have to know when you've reached your limit. And as patient as I am, trying to build a business at this point, I'm finally learning how to delegate. All right, so when it comes to investing in yourself, obviously it's about self-belief, right? And a lot of the times when you can't see something, it's very difficult to believe that it's possible. So this was the amazing thing about coming to LA for me. And there's no better view, at least from my experience since day one, than Runyon Canyon. But I would come up here, living in my hostel, I would, I would run down sunset, come up, come up to Runyon Canyon, and I would just get to the top and I would look over all these amazing homes and I'd be like, you know what? There's someone in that home and that could be me. Let's go up this hike. I'll show you what I used to do virtually three, four times a week. Okay. We have made it. One thing I would do um, every time I came up here is I'd look at all the houses and I'd pick one that I liked. And there's this one home, and I don't know who owns the home, I don't even know the address of the home, I just know what it looks like. And it has a swimming pool right there, right on the edge. So I'd look at the swimming pool over there at that home, and I would stand here for like 10 minutes and imagine myself swimming in that pool. I would feel the water on my skin. That idea of living that lifestyle and knowing, okay, this could be mine. This feels like it's mine. It gets you excited for it. You know, in the space since I originally moved to LA to now, I would say my growth as an individual and the success in my business has been very rapid because of the excitement I've had to get to where I'm going. Because when you know you're going somewhere, it's like you're gonna drive way faster, right? When you're excited about the destination, you're gonna drive so much faster to it, you know? And that's what, that's what it takes. It takes that excitement and that knowing deep down that that's yours. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through right now the world's most simple and effective investment strategy. Invest in yourself. The less control you have over your life, the more control you need over your investments. And you're not gonna gain control by investing a load of money in crypto or investing money into the stock market because you have absolutely no control over what happens to that stock or that coin, right? But what you do have control of is yourself. When you have less than $10,000 to your name, your mission needs to be to turn that $10,000 into $100,000. And the only way that you're gonna get that type of return in a reasonable amount of time is to invest that into yourself and work your ass off. Whether that's courses, whether that's experiences, whether that's learning from people, whether that's equipment. So let me give you my example of this. I was in LA, I was working in a call center, a mortgage call center, and I just started my mortgage Instagram, the mortgage kitchen, right? And I actually had just started to gain some traction on this. I was only using my iPhone, and I think at that time maybe I had about a million, maybe two million views in total over the first few videos. I was at a crossroads because I had about $4,000 left in my account. I could buy two new cameras and a microphone that would help me make more content and thus generate more leads, or I could have that money and keep that as a safety net, right? I live on the edge because when you don't have much, you don't have anything to lose, right? So I thought, fuck it. I'm gonna go ahead and take that $4,000. I'm gonna buy two new cameras. I'm gonna buy an awesome microphone and I'm gonna double down on my social media thing. That led to lots more leads. That led to lots more business. And I went from 20,000 followers to now just under half a million because of that initial investment. I knew I wasn't investing that into the camera, I was investing that into myself. Now, the second highest level of control you have in an asset is gonna be real estate. Because if you look at the stock market, if you look at any other investment, you have absolutely no control over what that stock will do. However, you do have control over what type of real estate you buy, what piece of real estate you buy, and at the same time, you can do something called forced appreciation. You can force the appreciation of a piece of real estate by buying it, renovating it, and then the value of that piece of real estate goes up. So if you have around 
If you don't have a primary residence, it makes sense. If you have a primary residence, but you'd like to buy an investment property, go ahead and do it. Third thing here, once you get into the six figures, now you can start moving into the stock market, into crypto, any of these superfluous investments that you don't really need, but you wanna keep your money liquid. That's where you can start doing that. So when you don't have money, you need to gain control. And gain control over your asset means gaining control over you. And gaining control over you begins with believing in yourself, invest in yourself, and then invest in the others. And this is a crazy thing coming from a mortgage broker, but yourself first, real estate second, everything else third. That's it, that's a wrap and I'll see you in the next video.